Today we're going to be talking about aerodynamic balancing on race cars. Now this is related to something that I talk about a lot in a few of my aerodynamics videos, which is of course the center of pressure. So this is something that affects all types of race cars that have aerodynamics coming into play, whether they're single seaters like autocross vehicles, um, high speed race cars, even like land speed record cars or time attack cars. Basically, if they have aerodynamics as a key factor on them, the center of pressure and aero balance is important for them. So what is the center of pressure? Well, it's a relatively simple concept. Basically, we have a whole bunch of different aerodynamic devices on our car. Let's say we've got a front splitter, rear wing, rear diffuser. They all provide downforce across the car. Now, we have multiple centers of pressure, but the one that people are most familiar with is the sort of front rear center of pressure. So if you imagine we have more front downforce, our center of pressure would be located here. If we have more rear downforce, it'd be located here. It's just the center of the average of the downforce. So imagine we get all these downforces and combine them into one big force vector. So we have little force, little force, little force. We can add those three, apply it at the center of pressure, and that will equivalently act as the same thing. It's quite a simple mechanical concept. So basically our center of pressure is telling us where our downforce is based. So if we look at it in terms of a wheelbase thing, if we take the halfway point of the wheelbase, if our center of pressure is behind the halfway point of the wheelbase, it will be more downforce on the rear axle. If our center of pressure is in front of the halfway point of the wheelbase, there'll be more downforce on the front axle. The important thing to note here is that that's just showing the bias of downforce front and rear axles. What we really want to compare it to is where our center of gravity is, because that will be our proportional grip gain. So if you look at the center of pressure being behind the center of gravity, that means that we proportionately have more aero grip on the rear axles. If we move the center of pressure to in front of the center of gravity, we proportionally have more aero grip on the front axles. To move the center of pressure, we can adjust our different aerodynamic elements. To move it rearwards, we can apply more rear wing. To move it forwards, we can apply more front diffuser or fit a larger splitter. We can also change out our rear diffuser, which will change how the front operates as well as providing different kick line downforce at the rear of the diffuser. So these are just a few ways in which we can change our center of pressure. If our car was experiencing high speed understeer, we'd want to shift our center of pressure forwards. If it's experiencing high speed oversteer, we'd want to shift it rearwards. But like all this aerodynamic stuff, it's never quite as simple as that. There's actually more to consider with the center of pressure than just the downforce balance front and rear. What we need to consider is also the balance of the side forces. So there are two primary centers of pressure that we're concerned about from a handling point of view. And that's this one, which is our essential grip aero balance. And then the side force center of pressure. Now this is, if you watch my shark fin video, all about getting our yaw stability right. So if our center of gravity on this car is about here, we could have our sideward center of pressure, either rearwards, or forwards. And we could do that independently of these downforce elements. So say adding a shark fin through here would shift our sideward center of pressure rearwards. If a sideward fin hits us, we've got more pressure being applied on the rear end. This means that our center of pressure with respect to downforce can actually be completely different to our center of pressure with respect to side force, which leads to some interesting consequences. Fundamentally, when push comes to shove, all the aero forces we put through the car go to the tires because that's all we really care about in terms of grip is in fact the tires. If we just look at our downforce center of pressure, we can see that I can shift it forwards or rearwards and it will change our normal loads on the tires. So shift it forwards and we end up with something like that, which as I mentioned before, can tweak our properties in terms of under and oversteer by changing our lateral grip. This means that our effective balance change is going to be roughly proportional to our velocity because of course downforce is a half air density times velocity squared times area times coefficient of lift. So this is proportional to velocity. This side force component is proportional to the effective side wind of the car. The only way that a car gets a side wind if it's not from a gust is from a yaw angle entering a corner, which in higher speed corners is roughly defined by your rear tire slip angle. So if we have four degrees of rear slip angle on the rear tires, 
the car is yawed in four degrees, or alternatively, we can think of it as a four degree direction on the wind. So we have our oncoming air and our sideways air. If we are yawed, we are in a corner generally. If our center of pressure from the side is forwards of the center of gravity, what will end up happening is that our side force is essentially applied at that center of pressure. The center of gravity is here. We have a distance between the two. This means we have a torque, which means that as we have turned into the corner, we end up with the car trying to rotate more into the corner. Now this is a torque. This is trying to a transient force, even if you're in a steady state corner. So it's trying to effectively spin you. If your center of pressure is behind the center of gravity from the side point of view, that force goes the other way. So we're getting turned out of the corner. So this will change how stable the car is. If the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity, the car will always be stable in your. If it's forward, it will always be unstable in your from an aerodynamics perspective. And what's especially bad with this scenario is that it's super unstable because as the yaw angle increases, the yaw torque increases, which is trying to increase the yaw angle, and then, then causes this force to increase because this in angle has gone down more. So then we now have even more side force, we have even more torque, the car is trying to diverge, it really wants to try to spin. Whereas if we just modify the downforce center of pressure, we've just changed what the downforce is sitting at statically, so we've changed your effective front end of grip. It's not going to get worse as the car starts to rotate more, it's going to stay pretty much how it was. So you can see how having this center of pressure rearwards is far more critical than having this center of pressure rearwards which you can adjust as is needed to suit driver preferences, car characteristics, stuff like that. As a final comment, I'd just like to comment on sensitivity of the car and how where you ideally set the center of pressure isn't where it sits. Typically speaking, our car will generate the majority of its downforce, if it's a sort of time attack car, from the front splitter and the rear wing. They're sort of the two big areas. The diffuser itself, the kick line generates a little bit of downforce, but on most time attack cars, the kick line's either further forward than you think, or it's not making a huge amount if it hasn't been well optimized. So primarily, we're looking at front splitter and the rear wing. The rear wing, no near ground effect. So as ride height changes, doesn't make a huge difference. The front splitter, quite close to ground effect. Ground effect has quite a significant effect on how much downforce this is making. So let's say you go under brakes. The car pitches forward. So we've already put this in significantly more ground effects now. And if we were getting downforce off the diffuser kick line, the diffuser is now being raised because the car is pitched. This means that we now have significantly more downforce there and the same amount of downforce there. This means that the center of pressure shifts forwards, which can lead to a looser tail and the car feeling sort of more oversteery, more loose on the rear. But this effect can actually occur even when you're not under brakes. As your speed increases, the downforce will compress the suspension. As the suspension is compressed, uh, typically in the time attack car style cars, you'll end up with more downforce getting produced from the front. More downforce being produced from the front leads to exactly that same problem, where the car may now start to be a bit more unstable in higher speed corners. And perhaps something to consider is that sometimes you need to run more wing than is necessary on a car like that just to try and balance out the fact that the front end is all of a sudden making more downforce than you'd expected so your center of pressure shifted forwards and your car doesn't have the balance that you thought it did when you set it up in CFD or wind tunnel or static. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video cleared up a few things for you in terms of aero balancing, center of pressure and ride height sensitivity. If you liked it, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and leave a comment stating what you want for my next video. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.